So aside from not getting Love Live meet and greet tickets, Anime Expo 2023 was pretty fun. I got to meet two new people with Arena-chan boards, and one person who had Arena-chan board last year, but not this year. We started a Discord group chat. Anyway, let's get started with part 2 of my Arena-chan board v2 video, the boring step-by-step -step build tutorial. Okay, face cam time. Uh, it's still pretty hot over here, so I will just be wearing the board and the wig and this shirt from Anime Expo 2023 instead of a full cosplay. Let's start the Renatron Board V2 build tutorial. You'll need a computer, a 3D printer, a soldering iron, and optionally a hot glue gun, a heat gun, a brass heat set insert tips for the soldering iron, but I would not recommend using a heat set insert press or a jig. Okay, so for the computer, you'll need it to flash the Lolan C3 Mini ESP32. Uh, the computer will need a USB port, and you'll also need a Chrome or Chromium based browser. For the 3D printer, you'll need a print area of 220 by 220 millimeters or bigger. So your basic Creality Ender 3. I use the Ender 3 V2. You may need to disable skirts and brims for the bigger parts, mostly the front parts here. And you may have to edit the firmware to use the entire 235 by 235 millimeter bed, because there are some uh, safety areas for clips and whatnot on the bed sometimes. Uh, you'll also need a wire stripper, which strips wires as the name suggests. For the soldering iron, I can't teach you how to solder because I'm still bad at it, even though I graduated in biomedical engineering. Uh, but the soldering iron is not just for soldering the electronics, you'll also be using it to insert the heat set threaded inserts. Uh, speaking of the heat set threaded inserts, what are they? Well, they're screw threads that get inserted into the plastic with heat, and they're sold in sets of dozens or hundreds. They're more durable than 3D modeled threads or just <laughs> screwing it directly into the plastic. Uh, but most importantly for me, it's easier to model a hole than it is to model a screw hole. To insert the heat set threaded inserts, pro tip, use a tip. There are specially designed soldering iron tips to help with this process. They won't snag onto the inserts. We'll be mainly using an M3 size, but an M2 is used a few times. Honestly, you might be able to get away with just using a regular soldering iron tip, but usually they're sold in sets, so you'll probably just get an M2 anyway. Heat set threaded insert presses and jigs are pretty costly and not necessary. No. A uh, hot glue gun. You'll be using this to prevent strain on the solder points. I learned this the hard way. At Acon 2023 this year, the ground wire snapped, and I had to find a pretty janky way of fixing it without a soldering iron. Basically, I took a C to C USB cable, plugged it in one ear and to the other ear, just to get the grounds connected on both sides. And I mean, that worked, but you'll probably want to save some headache with some hot glue. A heat gun. Uh, you'll be using this to resize this headband for your comfort. And also tighten the clip mechanism on the ear cups. Uh, that's here. Any cheap Harbor Fright heat gun will work. If you've ever done EVA foam cosplayers, like... <laughs> not cosplay. If you've ever done EVA foam cosplays for armor and stuff, you know the drill. Or the heat gun. Let's go over the materials. You'll need uh, 3D printer filaments, obviously. Uh, you will need to use PETG or ABS for some of these parts. You can use PLA for non-structural parts, which will save you a bit of headache. The hardware. You'll need countersunk screws so that you screw them in and they're flat and flush. And then you'll also need some nuts and threaded inserts. The electronic parts, of course. There's the LED matrix and the microcontroller, some batteries, uh, the charging module, some switches, wires, you know, various things like that. And then uh, some other things that don't fit into these categories. Um, mostly padding and glue. The filaments. While PLA can be used for most parts, PETG, or ABS, is required for the main headphone parts. That is the headband, 
and the ear cups. These white parts that directly interface with the headband. PLA is too brittle to reliably support the friction fit on these parts, so you will need to use something more flexible like PETG or ABS. I haven't actually ever printed anything with ABS, so I will recommend PETG. So let's go over the filaments for the default Renotron board. Remember the PLA is easier to print and paint if that's how you want to go. So here are some things that must be PETG or ABS. You'll need black PETG for the headband, white PETG for the ear cups, and then these things can be PLA or you can use PETG, your choice. Black PLA or PETG for the ear domes and these side spheres. You'll need white for faceplate, the matrix frame which is hidden underneath here. The foam holders, which hold headphone foam in place. Uh, the flowers, which are in these parts. And these headband dots, if you're using a headband model that uses the dots. Honestly, these aren't entirely necessary, since they often just do not draw these, mostly in the anime. But I think even the official Reno-chan board will not have them. So, uh, your choice. Silver PLA or PETG for inner and outer sides, and the hinges that attach the sides to the front. Cyan for front back, the front front, and the top accents on the sides. And then pink for the bottom accents. These are the default colors that you'll see in most artwork. You can print them whatever color you want or paint them how you see fit. It's really up to you. The silver, I do recommend that you use PETG or ABS mostly because a lot of the structural strain will be on the silver parts, particularly the hinges. It's mostly the hinges that I recommend for PETG in this list, but I also printed out the side pieces in PETG just because you know, might as well since I have it. Uh, so in summary, these are the PETG required parts, the headband in black and the ear cups in white. Here's the diagram of the PETG required parts plus the PETG recommended parts. Headband, ear cups, and then the silver sides, the inner and outer sides, and the hinges. These parts are okay to print in PLA. Domes, in black, and the side spheres also in black, white faceplate, the white matrix frame, the white foam holders, white flowers, and the white headband dots. Silver parts, again the inner and outer sides and the hinges, and the cyan parts are the front back, the front front, the top accent, and then pink is the bottom accent. Uh, the hardware. You'll be using M3 screws and nuts. M3 countersunk screws about 70 in total. You'll need two M3 by 30 millimeter screws for the hinges, and then M3 by 6 millimeter and or M3 by 8 millimeter screws for everything else. And uh, you may be able to get away with M3 by 10 millimeter screws if it's a particularly thick part. Uh, M3 nuts. You'll need two of these nuts for both of uh, the hinges. One nut per hinge. So uh, here and wherever it is on the other side. M2 screws and nuts. You'll be needing a lot fewer of these, mostly for parts that I could not control the size of. Two M2 by 8 millimeter screws uh, to secure the power switch over here. Uh, you'll need M2 by 6 millimeter screws, two of them. To secure the microcontroller, you'll need two M2 nuts for the power switch again. Over here. Uh, again with the heat set threaded inserts. You'll need two of the M2 by 3mm inserts for mounting the uh, C3 mini microcontroller. Uh, you can use tape instead of inserts and screws for this part since uh, you won't really be needing ready access to the USB port. Uh, you'll need about 70 M3 by 3 millimeter inserts for everything else. You'll want to avoid the fancier, longer uh, inserts because they might be too long for some of the thinner parts. 
and they're also more expensive. Then you've got a few options for screwing the front of the board onto the sides. Option one, which is what I use, are two M3 thumb screws. Uh, you can use thumb screws for quick, tool-free disassembly for traveling and storage, I guess. The two thumb screws go into the center holes of the hinges. And then option two for a more secure, tighter angle fit is using anywhere from two to six M3 by 10 millimeter screws. This is also cheaper since you're probably going to have some spares of these just lying around. So again, use two of the screws to go into the center holes of the hinges and then adjust the angle to how you want. And then one or two screws go into these arc shaped holes to secure the angle that you want the sides to be at. The electronic parts. The main part here is the 16 by 32 pixel LED matrix. Renatron board V1, the video of which you may have seen a few years back, uh, used in 18 by 32 pixel matrix and that part is now unavailable. Uh, these new 16x32 matrices from AliExpress work just as well after uh, I made a few changes to my code. The, it's just a little annoying because there's no holes to just screw them on to attach, so you, I had to get a bit more creative. Uh, be aware that the code and model are both uh, built based around this specific part, so I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but what if you want to try something different? You know, use something that you already have. Uh, then you must use the Arduino IDE to modify parameters of my code to fit whatever you used. You'll want to make sure that you're using NeoPixels. Those are three pin LEDs and they are addressable. You all want to avoid uh, the more advanced Hub 75 matrices, which have like a whole big ribbon cable and they're really thick. And you'll also want to avoid non-addressable LEDs, which are typically like four pins. So the Lolin C3 Mini, uh, which is based off of the ESP32C3 chip. You might be able to substitute other boards in the Lolin Mini form factor because they'll all fit. But this project uses the C3 Mini because it has Bluetooth 5.0 Low Energy, or BLE, which I use for phone app control. The V2.1.0 just adds like a big RGB LED, and you, you won't need that. You won't. You probably won't even be able to see it that well. The battery. A 103450 3.7 volts 2000 milliamp hour lipo battery. Uh, the name 103450 means that it's 10 millimeters thick by 34 millimeters wide by 50 millimeters long. A single battery will last you about six to seven hours unless you're blasting out something power intensive like Spider Man or. Sans Undertale. I think that's too bright for even the camera to catch. Uh, two batteries will last you 12 to 14 hours. You know, basic math. But, and I cannot stress enough, be sure that the voltages are equal before you connect the batteries together, or bad things can happen. And to charge the battery, you'll need a TP4056 Type-C USB charging module. Uh, it charges the LiPo battery by USB-C, and not all TP4056 boards are the same size and shape, so I linked the specific one that I used uh, in the description. Uh, you may need to trim these front corners in order to better fit the circular shape of the ear cup. Uh, you could use a micro or mini USB variant if you hated yourself. A 5mm latching slide switch. I just like using these in 3D printed projects since they're easy to model. It's just a rectangular hole flanked by two circular holes. If it's too hard to screw and nut it in, uh, you could try gluing it in, I guess. The uh, JST-SM3 pin pigtail connectors. 
The LED matrix comes pre-soldered with some of these on, so you might as well use a matching pair so that you can quickly connect and disconnect your circuit for travel purposes. Uh, an optional thing is uh, Cherry MX switches. Three of them. We'll use these to call up preset expressions without having to take out your phone. Like so. Doesn't matter which dial you use. Reds, blacks, silvers, browns, blues, greens. It's a little hard for me to tell colors through this grading here. Personally, I like MX Blues switches for the click. I'm not sure if you're hearing my keyboard clicks, which might be obnoxious, but the clicky feel helps me know if I'm actually properly clicked them or not. And you'll also need wire, solder, flux, and you know, all that stuff. It's an electronics project after all, you know the drill. And some other miscellaneous materials. So, padding. You'll need ear pads. I used 100mm circular pads. You will want ear pads, but uh, the headphone pad is optional. It is nice though. Uh, yeah, just attach them with Velcro tape or something, or just glue it on. You do you. Speaking of glue, hot glue to relieve wire strain, as I mentioned before. And then if any parts break, you can use super glue or side grip 16 to repair those parts. Uh, and you also need double-sided tape to secure the battery and maybe the accent pieces, because I can't quite get snap fit stuff to work. Okay, and method. Part 1. Flashing the Lolin C3 Mini. Jump cut to the overhead camera, because this part needed to be done separately. Uh, let's flash the Lolin C3 Mini to be used in our Renotron board. To flash the C3 Mini, you'll first need to install the Arduino IDE in several libra- <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've made a website that should do all of the hard work for you. Normally, for this part, you would just need the USB-C cable and the Lolin C3 Mini, but for demonstration purposes, uh, let's create the uh, half circuit. Here's the LED matrix, and here is uh, a pigtail. Remember that this is just for demonstration purposes, so you will not actually be soldering these pin headers or crimping this connector on. Uh, that'll just be too tall. This is just for demonstration purposes. So let's plug that in there, plug this in here, and plug the USB-C cable in. And just to, sh uh, just to show you that the board is indeed erased, it hasn't been flashed with the software, so uh, yeah, no tricks here. So uh, the website the link below, blockwonkle.github.io slash capital R Rena. The uh, R has to be capitalized or else it won't work. I checked. So let's follow the instructions on the website together. Step 1. Click on the big blue connect button below. Uh, plug slash replug the uh, C3 Mini, so that we can tell which COM port is the C3 Mini. Uh, it looks like here it is the COM4 port for me, and that's just because I've got, uh, other COM ports in use. So, uh, let's move that window out of the way first. Get out of here. Uh, first, we need to activate Device Firmware Upgrade Mode, or DFU Mode, on the C3 Mini. So to do that, hold the 9 button, press the reset button, you should hear the USB disconnect sound, and then once you hear the USB reconnect sound, that second sound, uh, you can let go of the 9 button. Uh, the C3 Mini is now in DFU Mode. So now, go back to connect. Uh, remember that for us, or for me, I mean, uh, the board is on COM4. Click connect. And follow these instructions. Uh, install Renotron Board C3 Mini. 
You can erase the device if you want to, or you can leave the option unchecked. Yes. Uh, it should take some time to erase it. I probably will speed this up. Now it's installing, should take two minutes. Installation complete. Uh, but nothing happened, you might wonder. Well, now you need to reset the C3 Mini, either by unplugging and replugging, or just pressing this reset button. It should also be visible as the Bluetooth low energy device called Rinachan Board. And there you have it. Method Part 2, 3D Printing. As discussed earlier, print the headband and ear cups in PETG or ABS, along with whatever other parts you can that you think might need the extra durability. Use a 0.4mm or 0.6mm nozzle. Uh, the ear cups need supports, but the rest of the parts should be fine without them. Please use a standard printer like an Ender 3. Time lapses just look cooler on belt printers. Zero effort on my part. Method Part 3. Assembly. Uh, before you start assembly, check the fit. Insert the headband into the ear cups. The ear cup tab should click onto the notches of the headband, allowing for an adjustable fit. If the fit is too loose, remove the ear cup, soften the tab with a heat gun, and press it in to tighten the fit. Remember to wear gloves, or use a tool since the plastic will still be hot. Heat set threaded insert locations. For the domes, you'll need four M3 inserts each. Here, 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 and here. Here, 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 and here. The left cup will need seven M3 inserts. Here, 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 and here. The right cup will need four M3 inserts, here, 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 and here. And it'll also need two M2 threaded inserts for the microcontroller here and here. For the front back part, on the front side of the back part, uh, to hold in the LED matrix, you'll need four M3 inserts here, 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 and here. And then on the back of the front back, you'll need two to six of them. Focus on the centers first, here and here. The other ones here, 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 and here. So two or six on the back of the front back. So on the back of the front front, you'll need ten M3 inserts. Here, 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 and here. So for the outer sides, you'll need 11 M3 inserts each. Here, 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 and here. Here, 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 here. Foam holder discs will also need two inserts each. Here and here. Okay, so let's assemble the left ear cup. First, glue the flower into the dome. Now solder the battery, or batteries, the TP4056. Solder the red wire to the B plus terminal. Solder the black wire to the B minus terminal. Then optionally, repeat if you want a second battery. And again, Make sure that the batteries are the same voltage before connecting them. Now position the battery between the left dome and the left cup. Keep the TP4056 inside the left cup, and fit the battery through left cup's central hole. Orient the battery in portrait orientation, and orient the left dome so that the hole for the battery is also in portrait orientation and that the screw holes line up. You'll need four M3 by six millimeter screws. Uh, screw the left dome to the left cup, sandwiching the battery in between the hole that was made for it. 
And if you're using two batteries, you'll need another two M3 by six millimeter screws. Secure the second battery with tape first, and then also use these PCB clips and M3 screws to hold them in place. Now let's prepare the male pigtail. Here it is, using a colored one with red, green, and white. Colored ones are easier to explain. So first, you'll need to cut or remove the data wire, the green one in the middle. Uh, you can reuse it in a later step. Prepare to solder the switch. Fish the positive wire, the red one, from the pigtail through the uh, rectangular switch hole with the connector side inside the cup. Then fish another wire, such as the green wire you removed in the earlier step, through the hole as well. Uh, now let's solder the switch. Solder the positive pigtail wire, the red one, to the center pin of the switch. Solder the extra green wire to the pin that will be closer to the USB charging port when the switch is mounted. If you reverse the pins, all that'll happen is that you'll change which position is on and which position is off. But as long as one of the wires is the middle pin, you're all good. The green wire is going to go into the positive out, and the white wire is going to go into the negative out. To secure the switch, you'll need two M2 by 8mm screws and two M2 nuts. Insert the switch into the hole. Secure the switch with two M2 by 8 screws and two M2 nuts. I know it's hard to keep the tiny nuts in place on the inside. If it's easier, you can put the nuts on the outside or uh, use glue. Do whatever you think works. For this next part, securing the TP4056 to the ear cup, you'll need one M3 by 6 millimeter screw and one of the PCB clips. Left ear cup assembly complete. Here's an optional step, uh, assembling the preset buttons. This will require soldering to the Cherry MX switches, which adds a bit more complex soldering to the entire process. So you can just skip it if you want it to just be random like this. And uh, you can also always still use the app to control it. Uh, so you'll need the three Cherry MX switches. Insert any three Cherry MX style keyboard switches into the holes with the indents oriented towards the center. I solder the preset buttons to ground. Solder a wire to the outer pin. That's this one on each of the switches. Then solder that wire to pin 0. We'll be using pin 0 as an extra ground, just because we've got lots of pins that we won't be using, and there's only one ground pin on the C3 Mini. Uh, you may want to use a bare wire to solder directly to the three pins, here, here, and here, and then solder a regular wire from that wire to pin zero, so this black one will be in a regular insulated wire. And then this uh, gray line will just be a bare uh, wire. Next, solder the left switch, the other pin of it, to pin one. Solder the up switch's other pin to pin two and solder the right switches of their pin to pin 3. Remember that you're looking uh, from the bottom. Getting the left and the right flipped isn't a big deal as they function the same, but the labels on the app will be reversed. The right ear cup assembly. Soldering the female pigtail. Okay, so plus solder the positive red wire to VBUS. Solder the data wire to pin 6, and solder ground to ground. Note the order of the wires, because they will cross. 
Uh, do not glue the right flower onto the right dome unless you're omitting the preset button step. So uh, insert the right flower into the right dome, making sure to align the tabs correctly. These rectangular tabs fit into these rectangular holes. It'll act like a D-pad. Now position the right dome around the Cherry MX switches with the rectangular holes going around the Cherry MX switches. Uh, now screw the right dome to the right cup using four N3 by six millimeter screws. Secure the C3 Mini with two M2 by six millimeter screws. Now for the hinges, you'll need two M3 by 30 millimeter screws and you'll need two M3 nuts. Align the shaft holes of both halves. Insert the hex nut into the hexagonal hole on the bottom and insert the screw into the circular hole and screw it. Uh, to make sure you're using the correct hinge for the correct side, uh, ensure that the nut is on the bottom. It's not entirely vital, but if the nut's on the bottom and it falls out, gravity will keep the screw in and the hinge stays somewhat together. Uh, if the screw is on the bottom and the screw falls out, the whole hinge could fall apart, which would not be fun. Now let's put it all together. Left side assembly, and you'll pretty much just mirror this for the right side. Uh, you'll need two and three by six millimeter screws for the first step. Step one, align the foam holder disc uh, with the inner side, ensuring orientation of screw holes on the inner side match the orientation of the screws. So the cone shape holes should be facing away from the uh, foam disc and the foam disc should be shaped like a weird looking T so that you make an Oreo with the big circle and the inner side uh, and then secure with two of the screws. For the next step you'll need four M3 by 8 millimeter screws. Uh, align the assembled ear cup with the inner side that we assembled in step one of this process. Uh, fish the pigtail plug through the rectangular hole. Uh, do this now or you might have to unscrew a few things so that it'll actually fit again. And then secure the assembled ear cup to the inner side using four screws. Uh, next step, we'll need seven M3 by eight millimeter screws. Align the outer side with the inner side that we assembled in uh, step two. Secure with seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you'll need four M3 by eight millimeter screws. Align the corresponding hinge, meaning the screw on top, not on bottom onto the side that we assembled in step three, and then secure that with four screws. Now we'll snap in the uh, accent pieces and the side spheres. So we'll align the accent pieces and side spheres with the holes on the side as assembled in step four, and then snap them in place. Or if the parts snap out of place, just use uh, some good old double-sided tape and just tape them on. Repeat that process for one side and the other side. Symmetry. Uh, front assembly. You'll need four M3 by six millimeter screws. Sandwich the LED matrix between the front back and the LED matrix frame. And then secure it with four screws. Next step, 10 M3 by eight millimeter screws. Sandwich the face plate, the white one, this part between the front front and the front back that we assembled in step one of this part and secure it with the 10 screws uh, the headband if you're using a dotted version insert those dots this might be a bit more trouble than they're worth since a lot of illustrations and the anime in general leave this detail off uh, the headband has an option of dots no dots cat ears, or no ears. Final assembly. These are the steps that you'll repeat when you travel to cons, and repeat in reverse when you're traveling back home. So attach the sides to the front. If you're using the thumb screws, 
put the thumb screws into the central holes of the hinges. Option two, if you're using just regular screws, screw two of them into the center holes, and then optionally uh, adjust the angle, and then secure the angle with one or two screws in the arc-shaped holes. And then attach the headband to the sides, insert the ends of the headband into the top holes of the ear cups. The ear cup tab should click onto the notches of the headband, allowing for an adjustable fit. Just plug everything in and you should be done. Ta-da! And that concludes your onboarding of Rinachan boarding. If you've got any questions, join my Discord channel that I will make as soon as I finish editing this video.